This is the Doctor continuing the Battle Brothers Season 12 Anonymous playthrough. Uh, I said I wouldn't do anything until I found an interesting content, and look at that! I finally found the Icy Cave after I cut a swath of destruction through the snow. All the camps were like necromancers or uh, low numbers of barbarians. Very easy stuff. Uh, none of them were really worth recording, except there was one fight with a fallen hero champion. Which is like vaguely semi interesting. Probably should have recorded it. You know, first fallen hero champion. If I run across another one, I'll record it. But uh, he was easy to kill, and I took like basically no damage. He didn't even get to attack once uh, because of how strong my team is. He did drop a nice weapon. Where is it? Oh, I put it on pendant. Dropped this two handed axe, which is an upgrade over the great axe. Uh, it's got 50% uh, ignore damage, so 0 to 75 versus 0 to 60. That's actually quite a significant upgrade. It's the same as a Rusty Axe, so it's much likely to proc uh, Fearsome. So, uh, because the way the Splitman Fearsome check works is the main attack needs to just inflict one hit point damage, which like you're guaranteed to do with pretty much anything. But the secondary attack has to inflict more than 15 damage for the fearsome effect to trigger. And having greater uh, armor ignore damage uh, significantly increases that chance. It's also got a nice minus two fatigue. If I had a character who could go Zerk Frenzy, this would be a phenomenal weapon to pair with the, uh, the other axe I got, the minus two fatigue. Like, you can really uh, get a couple extra attacks off with that. Really, really good stuff. But I don't really have anyone who can go Zerk Frenzy with that because I've already like assigned most of my stat points. Except if I wanted to take one of my new recruits and do it, like my initiative builds. And the answer is maybe. Also, I wanted to say that this Swordmaster who's kind of, I'll be honest, kind of meh. Uh, Gubert Gatterer, welcome buddy. I've actually been upping your fatigue a little bit. It was 75. I think that might be a mineral. It's actually phenomenally bad. Because with Drunk, I want to see if I can get any sort of like Zerk Frenzy value out of you. I've been skipping a little bit of melee skill, which is actually a problem when you're a Drunkard, but we'll see. We'll see what we can do with you. Drunkard does add a ton of value. I'll be honest, this guy weren't a Drunkard, I'd toss him back into the pool. But I could probably do something with that. Plus damage is really hard to get in this game, so that's why I wanted to keep you. Alright, so I see Cave. Despite the fact that Aya is axe spec, the two-handed mace is just phenomenal. I took fast adaptation specifically for this one fight, just in case the barbarian madman wins. Uh, like, just in case I keep missing, because we all know this origin, you miss every single attack. He's got 10 defense, so I would have a 78% chance to hit, which is unbelievably horrifically bad. 78% that might as well be like a 5% in my mind. I just assume I'll miss four times in a row with odds like that uh, So fast adaptation should ensure I can get up to like 95% after two misses, which is good enough and As long as I hit him once he shouldn't be able to do too much to me uh, So we hit him once pray for luck drop the dog the first turn uh, he may or may not kill the dog. If he kills the dog, whatever, who cares? Like, we can get more dogs. Uh, if, on the other hand, he, uh, um, doesn't manage to kill the dog, we get a plus 5% accuracy bonus. The AI now hates to target dogs. It used to be you drop the dog, he always attacks the dog, which is great. But I've noticed the AI doesn't do that anymore. So, uh, as long as we can land the mace hit, he shouldn't be able to do anything to our super, super heavy armor. I've given Aya literally my best armor. The only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give him an iron will potion. Just in case somehow that guy penetrates most of my armor and starts inflicting damages. He does have crippling strikes. Some of those uh, abilities could wreck me. Iron will potion allows you to ignore non-permanent injuries for a fight. Which uh, has actually quite some synergies with like low hit point 9 lives nonsense. I used to think this potion was complete garbage, but there are certain niche use cases if you're willing to be crazy like I am. Uh, so, and there no other potion even like makes sense, so we're gonna drink this just as insurance. Not like I value this potion that much, and I purchased one specifically for this fight to guard against that like 
5% possibility. Or maybe it's more like a 10% possibility. So you got the Iron Will, buddy. Uh, you got a uh, sidearm. You have 18 fatigue. That's enough. You can't be like, if he inflicts a fatigue injury, you can't be like, you can't lose the battle that way. Uh, if you inf So I think I've done everything I can. The way the game chooses the brother that goes in is by experience. Aya has the most experience. And then Aspen. This is real interesting, actually. Look at the people who are the most experienced. My secondary plan way back when was to send um, Rages in with Crippling Strikes Executioner specifically for this fight, but it's not even a choice. You'll be fine, Aya. You're a big boy. Okay. He is also a big boy. Let's step back one. Let him do his thing. He's faster than me, which is great. Okay, he's gonna do that. I could step in and just hit him. Or I could... Actually... Uh... You know what? I'm actually gonna drop back two because I wanna try to drop the dog trick. Alright, wait. Yes, okay. So, we're gonna drop the dog. I'm gonna let him attack the dog. There's nothing wrong with that. We're just going to end turn. Let him attack the dog. If he kills the dog, whatever. We can get more dogs. If this absorbs some hits. Yeah, you know, he had absorbed two hits. That's that's good. Well done, Aya. Alright, so I'm going to let him attack so that I can apply the Day's debuff again. I'm not going to kill him this turn. So, wait. You see, uh, his odds to hit are shockingly good, 34%, despite my ridiculous defense. But as long as he days, he hits you for, like, nothing. Oh! How can I forget about that, um... I completely... Okay, okay, I completely forgot about the, uh, the five hit from the fatigue. Oh! I don't know, uh, I don't usually use fatigue neutrals in this battle, so that's not a problem. Just, like, completely zone out. Well, can't even attack with anything. The basic dagger is not going to do anything. Ugh! Okay, we're going to take two big hits. Oh, good job. Good job with the dodge. Okay, 78%, as you can see. I'm hitting a lot. I won't make that mistake again. Uh, well done, Aya. End your turn immediately. You might go ahead of him. You never know. Not impossible. Right, he's not hitting. That's great. You went ahead of him. And we landed all four hits. No problem. You don't, you're not guaranteed that sort of result. Ooh, Barbarian Madman's Lacerator. Now that is very interesting. I mean, I know it seems safe, but imagine I just keep missing, which you could... 78 is like nothing, and he just keeps hitting. Uh, and I also messed up one round. I don't usually go in for f with Fatigue Neutral. So next time, I'll remember that. That was, a, that was a silly mistake. So, anyway. We only took one hit. In my opinion, got super lucky. He missed, like, almost all his hits. Uh, but imagine, like, he hit every single hit, right? I'd be down to, like, 150 hit points. Uh, probably. Or armor. Like, oh my god. So tense. Okay. Let's check out this weapon. Uh, let's compare it. Uh, lower damage, but it's got the minus two fatigue. Huh. I mean, I think higher damage is better, especially because Maverick has recovered. Now, minus two fatigue. That's interesting, right? That's, um... Oh, it's 10 fatigue swing. I thought that would lower it to like 9 fatigue so I could use iron lungs and always swing twice, which would be insane. You need minus 3 fatigue for that interaction. Then I could have given it to, um, uh, who should we call it? Uh, Tormach, and it would be so fun. But alas, that is not to be. I mean, I'm not going to throw this weapon out. There might be some fights where this is better. 
wonder if it's actually better for the Kraken fight. You do less damage, but fatigue is such a big problem. I'm not sure. Uh, if you don't have mastery, it's 13 to swing. That's too much. Um, interesting weapon. If I didn't have this other weapon, this would obviously be phenomenal, but... Only a row, like, plus base damage or something. Oh, well. Whatever. It's fine. Uh, so now we will try to find the um, hunting grounds. Now, how many overwhelms do I have? I would like to bring Tormach, and I would like to give him Overwhelm. Gero is not going Overwhelm. And Bob the Beast is Overwhelm, plus a Flirpaderp. Hmm. Thing is... The thing is... I am actually slightly worried because I don't like I want to bring Flirpeter but he's also gonna die unless you keep him in the middle so you got to give him the bone plating and that's all very good but um I kind of want to try to be flexible with him you know I feel like I should go kill the Goblin City first and then deal with the Ezerok No, what I need to do is, um, the highest priority is the turning the Kraken thing. The, uh, the Unhold Pelt or whatever. I can get one from the graveyard. And so I need to kill some barbarians. That, that should give me it. I also just take the boat all the way down here. But that seems stupid. I don't really care about going down there. Um, let's... Let's explore this little bit of snow. You never know, there could be something hiding there. I hate not exploring stuff. Alright. Alright, there's nothing here. Not surprising. I decide what to do. We're obviously going to Grutenhorn first. Uh, need to kill Unholds. White Unholds would also be fantastic. I don't know where they are. Guess I'll just spend more time in the snow. They should show up. Ah, uh, okay. Since I'm out here, might as well. Oh, there's nothing else. I don't think. All right, let's um. Hmm. Probably gonna take the road south and explore some of this fog. There's probably nothing in here, but. I do need to explore Tundra. The hunting grounds could actually spawn over there. It's not impossible. Alright. Let's go to Grutenhorn. Let's see what's here. Trading goods, yada yada. Rest of no return. Hills to the east. That's good to know. Of course, I can't hire anyone. Uh, marketplace. Do some inventory management. Why not? Um, what else do I have to do? One skull? No. Uh, follow the tracks. I mean, if it's a one skull unho contract, I'd do it. What is this? Barbarian King, huh? Rugged Flats. That's all the way over there. And again, I'm not opposed to killing Barbarian Kings. It's just... It's not what I want to do right now. And... It's only a measly two skull, which is kind of beneath us. Not afraid of him. Let me do some inventory management. All right. I think I want to do the Goblin City first because um, I don't. There are certain characters who are designed specifically for that fight, and after that fight, I don't care if they die anymore. I don't even care if they die in that fight, like Flirpaderp. As long as they can, like, get through the fight, uh, I can throw them into the le other legendary locations and let them die a heroic death, you know? So, it makes a lot of sense to do the Goblin City first. Uh, and I have the dogs I needed. The whole point of coming north was to buy all the dogs, which I have a gazillion of them now. 
Uh, so, and the hunting ground could be here. Like, it's not impossible for it to be there. We have to re-scout most of this tundra again. So why don't I take care of that camp somewhere on the east, the rest of no return or whatever. And then we'll head, scout out all this, take a bit of a loop around here. Uh, through this fog, you never know, there could be something interesting here. And then head our way back towards the Goblin City. Yes, that seems to make sense to me. Uh, probably won't be until day 84 or something like that until I get back there, which is perfect because it'll give me a chance to level everyone up. Once that happens, uh, I'm free to fight like whatever I want, witch hut, um, and stuff. Um, if I can find unholds, I'll make a detour to the unhold camp first so that when I kill the goblin city, I can go kill the necrosavants. But, um, who knows? Like, Unholds could spawn in the middle of the map, right? I have to admit, I was a little surprised. It said there was a camp somewhere in the hills to the east. Could be over there. Or here. Whatever. Like, could I suppose be... Nah, that'd be southeast. But it doesn't stick to my plan. Congratulations on gaining range skills, people. I don't really care anymore. I don't really care about anything anymore. I'm kind of done with this campaign at this stage. It's just like me planning out the last couple of things to do. Uh, which I'm honestly kind of bored of. Alright, found this thing Fallen Keep. Quite likely to be an undead camp. We still have to scout all of this tundra. Just to be sure there isn't anything sneaky hiding out here. Uh, like the Azure Rock thing. So, this battle is going to be super easy. Um... I'm gonna record it, and I'm gonna feel no grod because there could be undead. It's most likely undead. I'm because I I am recording this because I need something. Oh, twelve brigands. This is not definitely not worth recording. Okay. Somehow they hit us. It's always shocking to me when the brigands manage to land a few hits, but it is what it is. Don't even need all this loot. Like, who cares? Alright, I have no choice but to scout the rest of this area. Make sure that the, uh... Azure Rock thing isn't hidden here somewhere. I don't think it's likely, though, because of the mountains, but... Never know. Could be, like, right there. Alright, let's... Mm, not getting very good, uh, sight here. Night. Let's just go out make sure it's not something stupid where your sight radius is decreased and you can't see anything. Okay, I don't think it's that. Uh, let's head back now south this way. Make sure we don't miss anything. By stepping on these mountains, there could be some stuff in these forests. Okay, there's some sort of undead camp. Many fallen heroes? I've never seen a camp that strong. That's actually kind of interesting. Huh. I mean, of course we're going to slaughter them, but, uh... Are they going to slaughter the caravan? I imagine. Now, see, isn't that interesting? This is many fallen heroes. That's actually a lot. And this one only has a necromancer. How weird. Huh. I'll, uh, take care of all this stuff off camera. Took care of those two uh, undead groups. Nothing of any real interest to report, except um, I did loot two fighting axes from those um, fallen heroes, which... Uh, have we even fought a Shrat? I don't think I have. They're actually going to be very useful when I have to fight Shrats. Where are they? Yeah, I haven't actually fought a Shrat. That's literally the only beast I've left to fight, just because like the game wouldn't give me any Shrats. Uh, hmm... Brigands. Okay, so there is probably a brigand camp, or it came from that camp. Uh, mostly, I just want to see, like... Uh, doesn't look like crossing the mountains is an easy ordeal. <laughs> uh, I don't think the hunting ground is here. The odds seem low. Could be somewhere in there, though. I wouldn't want to miss it. Oh my god, I have to cross all these mountains. Let's... Let's go see... Ooh, okay, there's kind of a shortcut here. 
see what we see. Tiny little brigand camp of absolutely no interest. Um, didn't I fight one of these like way back on day like 10 or whatever? I seem to remember that in this area. All right, well, I'm going to cross the mountains. Uh, nothing else to do. One nice thing about crossing mountains is you see more camps, so might as well go clear out that undead camp. Doesn't look like this is the tundra, but this area could be the tundra. Then we're gonna be back here, huh? Maybe I'll head south. Hit up these towns before going to the Goblin City. I will say the one nice thing about this area is lots of camps, even though... These camps are all beneath us. The thing is, they could actually have famed items, and I need the experience to level, like my guys, you know, Maverick, for instance, just leveled up. Congratulations! I think we need your hit points up a little bit. I know you have nine lives, but still. So I'm making my way gradually over to the Goblin City. I'm not beelining for it because I want to clear these camps, you know. All right, you know what? I've been running around killing camps with nothing interesting. Here's a fallen hero champion. It is what it is. Let's, uh, I'm going to do this fight and then end the episode. Let's see what sort of opposition we got. At least the bounty hunter is doing something. I think that guy has a famed kite shield. It's actually useful against the um, goblin city. Assuming it rolls extra melee defense. Okay, this is not a complete joke, actually. No, it's pretty jokey. Uh, if one of these fallen heroes had a two-hander, that would actually be semi-dangerous. But uh, this setup doesn't scare me. Alright, they're gonna get some cheeky hitting, whatever. I don't really care. Build a fast stack, buddy. You didn't even do that. Because you hit somehow, Nataros. Because your weapon has extra accuracy and all that good stuff. Ow. Very rude. Very, very rude. Uh, I might actually attack the Fallen Hero. Okay, there's some guys. This is... Oh, I didn't bring no... Gro I mean, I didn't bring low settings. I didn't bring two rallies. Okay, this is actually semi-interesting. Semi-interesting. I don't know. I really want to proc Berserk Frenzy there. Okay. That should be able to proc Berserk Frenzy. I do have two nets in the pocket of Nogra. That should help control the champion. Champion is the only thing of any concern. But he doesn't look like he has a famed weapon. I don't think that's a famed mace. Or mock, buddy. 89% miss. I love it. Alrighty. Okay. Good. Stay put. Okay, he didn't he didn't do his possession, which is good. Ooh, look at that headhunt. I love it. That one's not getting back up. Uber. Yo, beautiful work, buddy. Might as well check more javelins. Let's let them come in. Mm, the guys parked themselves in shockingly good positions. This could be a problem. Might need to focus fire on that fallen hero. This is fine. This is also fine. No, the guys are gonna get to attack next turn, but I think we'll be okay. There's only three of them. And at least my guys have some levels, you know. Still a little nervous, but. Yes, yes, do that. Once I cut through these uh, zombies, we should be in good shape. 
Let's see what that fallen hero does. Again, everything depends on what the fallen hero does. Okay. Not great. Poor mock. Buddy, get that one. Wow! 35%. He's got defenses. Okay, let's try to thin out the crowd so he doesn't get the backstabber bonus. That fallen hero is actually semi dangerous. Let's uh, get people over there. Um, Aya can take quite a few hits, but you can't take like unlimited hits from that thing. Do you have a. You're just here to control, buddy? Don't actually need to do anything? Okay. Start getting B res up. Aspen. Of course, you miss. Again, um, they have backstabbers, so if I thin out the crowd, you shouldn't be able to do as much damage. That's, yeah, that's that's about right. Well done, Termok. Well done. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. No way, outrageous. Definitely rally. Okay. Probably gonna go over and net that thing next turn. What's your defenses? 42. That's pretty good. I don't care about his, uh. Wait. Still have to kill the guys because they're the only way I and I can if I can get someone at the necromancer uh, this fight's also over I is gonna take some big hits here uh, champions do hit harder I think oh Aspen might be really good over there okay I uh, end your turn immediately no reason not to 40% okay you, you dodge one hit that's something B-Res, that fame sword is so good. Okay, I'm also going to move Rages over. Double team that thing. Alright, one guy's left. It's fine. Uh, he might get possessed again. My odds of killing him are extraordinarily low, but I also don't mind splitting the damage. I don't think I'm getting more adjacency bonuses. End your turn immediately. Good. Good! Alright, it was a complete waste of your turn, buddy. I'll take that. Um, I'm gonna actually net that one. I have so many nets to lower its defense. Wow. Alright, let's see if we can get Maverick up on that f Necromancer, then I just auto win. Sure. He res on that guys. Okay, if you want to waste your t t time breaking out of the net, that's great for me. Good hit, Rageous. That's a Berserk Killing Frenzy proc. That's less good. Well done, Krog. Taros. Go for that. Okay, hey! The stun from 3 at MA is coming in handy. Erez, buddy, you got a hit. Okay, he's got nine lives, so I'm actually gonna basic stab him because I get two attacks with fast adaptation. All right, got him. Whatever that shield is, we have it now. 
probably a useless weapon, but you know, it is what it is. Oh, he's getting back up. Does the nine lives proc again? I have no idea. Nope. Nataros, chuck your javelins. Gotcha, that wrecked his uh, possession because I did a lot of damage. It's a fun little mechanic if you, I learned this from some weird sins. Get Maverick over there. Alright, this battle's over. This is what this type of battle is like for me at this stage of the campaign, which is why it's not real interesting to record. Eh, this is a okay shield. It's a better kite shield. I mean, it has more melee defense. Shield skill builds to less fatigue. It's like something. Fallen Heroes Fortress. That's not a very exciting name. Uh, but yeah, like, so, you know, this type of battle, not real worth recording. Uh, there's not actually a lot of money from that fight. Okay, let's step on the mountain to see what we see. I wonder if the, ooh, uh, dire wolves. Friggin' Nightmare Wolf. That town probably has a dog. 19 dire wolves. Do I actually need direwolf loot um, to make the additional fur padding if I find white unholds? I, mean, I can't even find white unholds. I have way too much loot as it is. I don't really care. There are more direwolves at the um, witch hut anyway. I don't really care about additional fur padding. Like At this stage of the campaign, it's good against... Wow, well, it's good against three enemies. Ejirok, the Kraken, and Barbarians. That's pretty good. But I don't even have the Unhold Pelt. Like, uh, I don't feel like chasing those things. Kill this. And then just head towards the Goblin City. I'm sure I'll find more Dire Wolves to fight at some point. Um, I don't think the Hunting Grounds will be here. It's, like, if I were to start, it would be back here. And then we just go east. I think there's a real good chance the hunting ground just out here somewhere, you know. I could hit hit up these three towns again. Try to pray for an unhold contract. That seems pretty good. Then I have after I hit the goblin city. Uh I mean, I, I don't want to kill those dire wolves. It takes too long. Might as well kill this encampment and then sell off my loot and then figure out what to do. But I'll deal with all of that off camera. Thank you for watching. Until next time.